What's up football fans and welcome to Youth One's special presentation of the Elite 101 Top 10 Countdown. If you've been paying attention over the past few weeks, we've been breaking down the top 101 football players in the nation. We've made our way through America's great football towns and now we're here to bring you the best of the best. Kicking off the countdown at number 10 is an athlete who proves the saying, everything is bigger in Texas. Quarterback Jalen Donvin Nelson. <laughs> Jalen is one of the more physically built quarterbacks in the nation. I wouldn't be surprised if he was, in fact, the strongest. Uh, in last year's East Bay Youth All-American Bowl, he single-handedly put the West team on his back, mounting a second-half comeback. Uh, they came up a little short in that game, but you know Nelson is, is just a player who can do it all. He will single-handedly take over a game and win. The way Jalen Donovan Nelson plays, he reminds me a little bit of a younger Donovan McNabb. He's got the physical bulk that a lot of quarterbacks at this level, and even on the high school level, don't have, but he still has got that speed. He's got that 4-8 speed that it can beat you around the corner or up the middle, and he's just a dangerous player. A number nine athlete has always been a force on the football field, but after gaining 10 pounds of muscle this offseason, linebacker Blake Gallagher is somebody you don't want to run into. <laughs> When talking about Gallagher, you have a player that immediately reminds me of Brian Urlacher of the Chicago Bears. Uh, Gallagher plays sideline to sideline. It's just one of the toughest kids out there consistently on the field. We saw him at uh, FBU Boston earlier this summer, and he was just flat out hitting people when it's supposed to be a non-contact drill. Blake Gallagher is a linebacker's linebacker and is going to make you pay if you come in his zone. Coming in at number eight is a wide receiver who was virtually unknown until just recently. Making plays all over the field is Orlando per year. Per year is a wide receiver who can really do it all. Uh, he comes from one of the best football schools in America down in Louisiana at the Evangelical Christian Academy, and he can make every catch you need him to on the field. He can run a nine route, he can run slants, he can go deep, he can stay short, he can do it all. And in just the way that he goes up and catches the ball, he violently attacks the ball. It's almost, it's almost like he's a defensive player playing wide receiver. Coming off a season where he had nearly 700 receiving yards last year, there's no reason he can't get over 1,000 this season. Uh, he's the main target for another player on the Elite 101 list, Connor Curry, the quarterback. And there's proof that those two have a chemistry that really works for him. Anytime a youth quarterback is described as Fran Tarkenton meets Brett Favre, you know you have a special player. Coming in at number seven is Tate Martell out of California. <laughs> Martell is a San Diego kid who when you watch him on film, your jaw just drops. And maybe that's why he's been in the news recently, uh, reportedly getting a verbal offer from the University of Washington as he goes into his eighth grade year. Uh, he can scramble, he can get outside the pocket, he actually moves the pocket, but always keeps his eyes downfield. He's got great feet in the pocket, and he can make all the throws, sideline to sideline, deep, short. He can do whatever you need him to do to make a win. Uh, Martell fits the mold of a tough quarterback. If you hit him, he's going to get up, you're going to get up, and he's going to tell you what he thinks about that hit. The next play, he's going to go over your head for a 20-yard touchdown pass, and there's nothing you can do about it with a special talent like Tate Martell. Our number six athlete is the top defensive player in the 2017 class. From Kinston, Massachusetts, defensive back Mike Silva. You talk about Mike Silva, you talk about an athlete well beyond his years. And I don't think there's a harder worker in the nation than this kid. We saw him at too many camps to count this past summer. Um, the kid could be a ball hawk if he needs to. He can hit you in your mouth as a safety or he can do it on the offensive side too, which is the scariest part. As a corner, he will lock down your best receiver, and if you do dare to throw at him, he can jump out of the gym and is gonna snatch that ball out of midair and be down the sideline for a touchdown before you can even blink. Silva comes from a dad who coached. He had a brother who played some D1 football, and he's learned the little idiosyncrasies that you wouldn't pick up on unless you come from a football family. Busting through the line at number five is a youth running back from Florida with the biggest lower body I've seen on a running back this year. From Oviedo, Florida, Marquise Mickens. <laughs> Mickens made the 2012 East Bay Youth All-American Bowl his personal coming out party. He recorded three touchdowns in the first half. There was just no tackling this kid. He's got such a strong lower body. He stays low throughout his entire run, which doesn't give anybody an opportunity to get a clean shot on him. He's gonna make a juke or run you over, and before you know it, 
you know, he's going to be in the end zone. Mickens hailing from Florida reminds me of another Florida running back, Maurice Jones-Drew. He's just got that thick lower body, that nonstop attitude, and he just makes plays happen all over the field. Our number four athlete doubles as a track star, and at 6'1 and 205 pounds, he's already built like a man. From Baton Rouge, Louisiana, running back Dylan Moses. <laughs> Moses is a kid that have, people have just started to know because he's been in the news recently for receiving a verbal offer from LSU. But Moses is a kid that I've known about for over a year now. He goes to camps and just turns in monster numbers, and he's somebody that's a really special athlete. It was reported that he ran a 4.46 at LSU's camp earlier this summer, and he became a, a, a legend at that camp right there. He can make all the moves you need him to make. He's been a power guy, so he has that speed, but he doesn't even have to use that all the time just because of how physically strong he is. He's 6'1", 205, and if you look at him, he's absolutely chiseled. It's, it's scary that an eighth grade running back can look like this. You know, whether he goes on to the next level to play linebacker, which many project, or running back, uh, he's gonna be a player that you're not gonna wanna forget. Remember the name, Dylan Moses. Coming in at number three is the 2011 Cobb County, Georgia Player of the Year, wide receiver, Trey Blunt. <laughs> You know, Blunt's a receiver that I noticed last year at the East Bay Youth All-American Bowl. Uh, I noticed that this kid just made catch after catch after catch. And watching him at practice all week, you know, I found myself asking, like, who's that kid? Where's, where's he from? What's his story? Now, you know, after scouting him for an entire year, I know all about this kid. Uh, 20 touchdowns last year, nearly 1,500 yards receiving. He's just one of those players that you can put on the field, and he's going to get open, and he's going to make a play. Earlier this summer, he played in the Georgia Future Stars game, and he made the game as a 6'1", 165-pound defensive end. But we see him as a wide receiver. He's the most dangerous weapon there is in the country. That's why he's this top wide receiver in the 2017 class. You know, Blunt's the type of wide receiver who can do it all. He can physically beat you. He can beat you with his speed. He can beat you with his route running. Heck, you just want to line him up and make him run a nine route. He's going to run right past you. He's going to out-jump you. He's going to do whatever he can to get his hands on that ball and get in the end zone. As a receiver who could probably get the ball in the backfield on end arounds and stuff like that, I don't see any reason why Blunt can't score 30 touchdowns this year. 20 was an amazing feat last year. Now he's going to up that by 10. He's another year stronger, he's another year smarter, he's another year faster. There's nobody down in Georgia that can stick up with this kid. Destined to be the next gridiron great out of South Carroll, Texas, is our number two player, quarterback Lindell Stone. You know, oftentimes people talk about quarterbacks got to be a field general or the leader or, you know, whatever term you want to use. And Lindell Stone is that player. He's the type of person that can rally a team around him just by going out and playing. He's a, he's a quarterback that you want to play for. He's almost like a, a Tom Brady where he's, he's not going to let you accept less than your best. He's going to push whatever he can out of you. Uh, Lindell Stone is a big body, he's six foot, he's 160 pounds. He can throw the ball a country mile if he wanted to, or he could put it right on you on a slant route. And he, his accuracy is just absolutely deadly. He's poised to be the next great one, he just is. Uh, we've seen Stone at a number of camps this offseason. Uh, we saw him down in Texas in Stephenville. Uh, we saw him at FBU Top Gun. We saw him at Junior Rank Prodigy. And the thing that always surprised me about the kid was he just consistently got better. It was just amazing to see his progression from you know May through the end of July, and he's he's a, just a special player. And finally, after a year of scouting, months of deliberation, and a hundred great athletes before him, our number one prospect in the class of 2017, quarterback Connor Curry. What more can you say about a youth quarterback than Connor Curry? He is the epitome of what the quarterback position is. He is a drop back passer, he can scramble, he's got arguably the biggest arm in the entire country and he's just not afraid to be a gunslinger. Um, he's got the weapons around him. He's got two wide receivers that are All-Americans in Orlando Poirier and Tanner Ash. Uh, he is just a field general. He's going to tell you where to go and he's going to say, get to that spot because I'm going to hit you with the ball. You know, Curry's the type of quarterback that you want. He eats, breathes, and sleeps football constantly. He's the type of player that is going to outwork you. When you're sleeping in on Saturday mornings, Connor Curry is up at a field throwing with one of his All-American wide receivers. If you don't want to do that extra rep after practice, Connor Curry's doing five extra reps. He's a type of player that you just want on your team. At FBU's Top Gun camp earlier this summer, 
People were wondering, I heard whispers, where's Connor Curry? I heard this kid was the real deal. He's not with the other seventh grade quarterbacks. You know why he wasn't with the other seventh grade quarterbacks? It's because he was up on the big field with the quarterbacks that are in eighth grade last year and currently in ninth grade. Uh, he was brought up with the older kids for better competition and Curry was still one of the most dominant quarterbacks there. He's just one of those kids who's born to compete, born to get better, and there's no doubt about it that the sky's the limit for a kid like Connor Curry. Well, that wraps up the top 10 of our Elite 101 countdown. To see the rest of the list, please visit www.youth1.com and stay logged on for everything youth sports.